Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Welcome to Championship Sunday in Anaheim, California. You guys are up early and you guys are awesome. You were perfect yesterday and I see they have a lot of energy today. Of course, I'm Axel Toss. I'm joined by Axlab and we're about to get started with the first match of the evening, of the morning. Oh my gosh. We got Naniwa versus Jadong, a best of three. The players are in the lobby. I'm going to ask if they're ready. And this is going to be quite the treat. As Naniwa gets on those sound canceling headphones. The countdown has begun day one or day three excuse me game one match one of championship sunday here at the spring championship event is about to begin the stage is going to be belshire vestige a protoss versus zerg that everyone kind of knew had to happen at some point in this tournament i mean it's just like the nano versus talk match it was destined yes. to happen destined to happen the question is who will stay alive in the MLG Spring Championship event. In the bottom right-hand location, I present to you your blue Protoss player representing the Alliance, the only non-Korean remaining in this tournament. Give it up for Naniwa. His opponent in the top left-hand location one of the best RTS players to ever play any RTS game. A legend in Brood War, becoming a legend in StarCraft II. Representing Team Evil Geniuses, he is Jadong. $374,000 in prize money. He's in the top few of all esports players, of all games, of all time. Absolutely amazing. Staggering. Staggering. And, and I mean, the, the scary thing about this guy is that's actually less than what like, his salary was in Brood War. <laughs> like, he made more money just, just playing for the team than even in tournament winning. So this guy, of course, uh, I mean, he's been around forever. And, and like you said, he's, he's someone that has to be feared and respected. All right, the stage is certainly set for this match. Again, it's on Belshire Vestige, a nice, a nice, nice neutral map to start things off here. I think a lot of pro players have really been warming up to this match. A lot of these players have very, have multi, a, a, a ridiculous amount of builds to use on a map like this. They've played on it for so long. Uh, again, a great stage for game one here. We're seeing Jadong not going for any three hatches before a pool here. Getting a pool on 13 and then going on to the hatches. So playing very safe to start things off, perhaps has distant memories of that dream hack game when Naniwa on this map went for that proxy two gay play to, cha to take Jadong out in game two. A build that if you scout as a Zerg, you can pretty much hold it off. And, and I mean, if you look at his second overdoor, it kind of went over to the right, yeah. then down, because he wanted to check. Uh, a lot of people in the proxy two gates are going to put him just outside that natural expansion. So the overdoor went all the way to the right before heading down towards Naniwa's base. He's, he's definitely aware that that's a possibility and, and making sure that doesn't happen to him here. Jadong identifying his opponent going for this one base opening. A lot of Protoss players loving to do this lately. It allows them the ability to get a relatively fast warp gate tech, the ability to apply pressure to their opponent, and it kind of forces their opponent to be very wary of what's going on. Of course, if a Zerg player spots a forge at the natural expansion of their opponent, they're going to be hitting that drone button a lot. Wow, four lanes going to be mildly annoying. You know here. what? This pylon might die. Motor core is going to come out, but the Zergians can just stay there and, and kill the pylon. Oh my God. Losing your second pylon? That's huge because now he actually has to build another pylon right now. He has one on the way. But uh, that's only going to put him uh, barely over his, his supply limit. He's going to need to start another one immediately. In fact, is that. Is he. No, no that's not going to be canceled, surely. Jadon's micro, though, is unequal to any in the world, though. He's moving the weakenlings away. He's trying to target fire down the Nexus can. He's going to get it. Jadon forced the can with a mothership core, desperately trying to hit. The Nexus is getting lower and lower. Oh, no. He's well, not going to get have it. to cancel. Okay. Everyone, take a breath. We can breathe a little bit. Now, Naniwa did lose that initial pylon. Units lost. Actually, he did lose seven links. So Naniwa will be slightly ahead. But losing that pylon is, a, is a, as you said, a pretty big deal. It is. Uh, overall, I think Naniwa is probably happy the way things went because there was uh, building that many Zergians. 
he, he cut a couple turns here and there. Sure. And, and so it probably slowed Jadong down more than Nanua. But you know what? I, I think Jadong did that on purpose to counter a Nexus built at 21 supply. Uh. Which is the most common, uh, one of the most common things for the Suzy. Build a Nexus, then the Militia Core. And, and I think Jadong's plan was to counter it. Nick. But Nano, uh, oh, it's a Dark Shrine. It's a Dark Shrine. He's, this is, he's doing that, that uh, Zell pressure into DT play. Oh, of course, a build. Oh, there's an Overlord very close to it. Oh, he sees it. Jadong sees the Dark Shrine. Oh, this build is all. This build is all about hiding that Dark Shrine, and Jadong able to see that. You can't hide things from this guy, man. Oh, oh now Nano knows it was spotted. He what? has. I, th I think he has to know that that Overlord saw that, that Dark Shrine being built. But what's really cool about Nano is I, I think he knew Jadong might try some something like those early Zergings, and he got the Malefic Core before the Nexus. Right. So, like, again, it's a situation, as you said, if he had gotten the Nexus a little bit earlier... And the Mothership Core a little bit later... He, there he's, was an he's cancel, he has to yeah. cancel the Nexus. I mean, even five seconds later on yeah. that Mothership Core, and the Nexus would not have uh, would, ha would have had to have been canceled. Wow. All right. Jadong and seeing the Dark Shrine is going to go for right for that layer. Of course, getting that Overshare out as fast as possible is important. Now, Dark Shrine is done. Is there a pylon across the map? There is on the top left-hand side there. Three DTs being warped in. I don't see any Spore Crawlers, Nick. I mean, he did see the Dark Shrine. He, he, no, he absolutely did. Still no Spork. This there is, is no detection for Jadong. I mean, he sees him now. He has to. He's, well, well now he absolutely yeah. knows. Now he's starting to Spork cars, but you know well, what? Hold on a second. They could actually just kill the Spork cars. They could go straight for They're the hatchery. They're going to target on the hatchery. Can anyone get the natural expansion? There's no Spork crawler in the vicinity for Spork crawlers immediately being made. Yes. This, this could be huge. He's going to get it. For sure, the hatchery is going to go down. Now the question is, can a DTs escape without dying, oh or how much more damage God, can they do? Oh my God! The hatchery goes down, and Jadong spotted the Dark Templar play, losing the hatchery, and can anyone you know get away with his DTs? I think Jadong must have thought it was a pylon. That's a location you often put a pylon. Oh. It's the exact same size as this building as a pylon, right? And he only saw it while it was building. So yeah. If he didn't click on it, he would have just assumed a blue ball yeah, of light. Yeah, assumed that's a pylon. Okay. You know, that, that makes sense. That, that's actually pretty crazy. Double Stargate follow-up here from Naniwon. Double Stargate off two bases. You know, that this can work. A lot of people are afraid of doing Double Stargate off two bases because it's hard to take a third base. Because sure. Zerg can overwhelm it um, before you get the wall set up. Right? So a lot of people try to set the wall up first, then go to Stargate units. But given the fact that Jedung only has two hatcheries to produce units from right now, yeah. there, there's no way he can make enough roaches or speedings to overwhelm a, a third Nexus as long as there's a few Void Rays overhead. Ling's looking around for the pylons, looking around for scary stuff. I, I don't think he's identified the double Stargate play from his opponent for now, getting that natural expansion back up. Going into Roach Speed also has Burrow just now beginning. Overseer with these Ling's looking for those Dark Templars, trying to track him down those units. Jada, uh, Nanyuan does not want to lose right now. No, DTs are very, very expensive. Uh, even if you kill Hatcher, if you lose all of your early uh, Dark Templar, it may not be worth it. Oh, he's taking out the Overseer, though. Wow. But and he's revealed the, the Void Race. Yep. He has another uh, the wow. Overseer going to confirm what he has uh, been suspicious of. Going to confirm the double Stargate play, double Void Ray play. Now, I'm, I'm imagining Naniwal goes out and takes the third right now. Yeah, the third gets taken down. Link's coming forward, though, here for Jadong. And this is the hard part about getting just Void Rays. If you're spending all your gas on Void Rays, you don't have any Sentries or Zealots out. It's very difficult to take that third base early. I mean, we're almost at the 11 minute mark, and Nano still doesn't have a substantial ground army yet because of the DT and Void Ray investment. He can try to target down like Spores and Overseers with the Void Rays, and then let the DTs oh, do right. work here at the third. Let's keep an eye on that. The Spore Crawler is in the third. There are some roaches there, so the DTs do have to be careful. Going to try to stay out of the detection, but the Void Rays are going to be looking for that Overseer. They want to keep those DTs hidden. Really cool strategy here from Nani Wong. Jadong's continuing to add more Queens, of course, that's to help deal with the Void Rays. Speedy's trying to cancel a third yet again. Zealots are out there. They're seeing if there's a run behind the main. But the Zealots come back. They juke the Zealots. They're heading right back to the third. Oh, if Jadon could cancel, that would be huge for him. Meanwhile, we have uh, Naniwa across the map, targeting down the Spore, which means no detection. The DT is now starting to slice away the Queens and the Roaches, trying to back up to that Spore Crawler for that detection. There's a Mothership Core here as well, but that's four Void Rays targeting down the hatchery. Jadon scrambling to deal with this. Back home, the third was canceled here from Naniwa. So this is a must kill situation here, and it looks like he is going to get the hatchery. Oh, or is he? The transfuses. Okay, he does get it. <laughs> wow, great pick off there from Naniwa. Going to try to take down these queens. And he's actually not just killed a third. He's, he's pretty much taking control of that entire section of the map. So it's going to be difficult for Jadon to rebuild that. He's going to have to wait until some Hydra lists. DST's uh, slicing away some drones. Overseers, so overseers. again, they're being targeted down by the Void Rays. 
just great play by Nanoa going straight for those uh, elements oh, of detection. Oh, she's gone. There's no detection. Oh, oh, there's detection somewhere. Oh, it's Spark Crawler. Yeah, just yeah. barely in range. Those ETs died. Hydra's going to force the Void Rays back. There may have to be a recall yeah. fairly soon here. Nanoa's trying to retake his third Nexus, and you know we're in a situation where uh, Jadong uh, has got to rebuild his third hatch, but he hasn't quite started it yet. And, and the third Nexus is already halfway done. Of course, it, it was canceled twice. Oh, Oh, okay. Oh, one void is so long. You know, I like how he's not recalling yet. As yeah. long as he's, I mean, if he messes up and loses the mothership core, that could be disastrous. But sure. uh, keeping his units here keeps Jadong uh, on his side of the map with the Hydra. He does not want to cancel that again. Yeah. It, once it finishes, he can recall the void rays to the Nexus. Yes. Uh, he might have enough units here. Pylon getting targeted down. Three sentries, three zealots, two stalkers coming forward. Looks like a recall did happen at the National Expansion, but Hydra's coming forward here from Jadong, taking down one of the Void Rays. Every single Void Ray is so important when you're going for a heavy Void Ray strategy. Another one getting into the yellow, but Naniwa backing that guy up. Hydra's trying to run away, one getting out alive. Naniwa showing a little bit of mercy there. Now, Keeping that third alive is, is what's important. It is, and Jadong's in a rough spot. I mean, he's only in two base economy. He doesn't have any crazy uh, tech units that can really turn a game around, like Infestors or Vipers. He's just on the road to Hydra Composition. Now, what's gone well for him is in that last engagement, he did pick off a couple of sentries. And those are True. difficult to replace with all the amount of gas investments Nano wants to do. So uh, if he can keep the sentry count low, he can try to overwhelm Nanoa with Hydranus early on. And that's he's going for Nidus. Nidus. He has to do that. It's very smart. He knows as time goes on with his economy, uh, as soon as he, as soon as Nanoa adds okay. in some storms or yeah. more sentries, he's in trouble. So he knows he needs to strike now yes. while he has the production advantage because he can build a lot of Hydranus. His opponent is only incrementing out Void Rays. He's still trying to get in yes. uh, the storm. Nanoa needs to spot this. Now he has all those Voiders in the air. So what, what, what he could be doing right now is patrolling around his side of the map, making sure to clear out the Overlords. With no vision over here, there's no Nidus potential. But there's a spot that is completely dark here for Nanny Wall at the bottom left hand side. There's no recall. The Motion Core doesn't only has 74, 75 energy. Nanny we Wall's could have committed. a crazy base race. This, uh, I mean, what a more appropriate beginning to Championship Sunday here at the Spring Championship event in Anaheim, California. Nanny Wall, oh my god, there's so many hydrogen. There's no way he can engage that right now. Get him back up. Remember, the Nidus is done. All the units going inside. And Naniwa doesn't necessarily know about this, no, he but doesn't. he's about to find out. And, and what is he going to do? Now, he, he's close to a recall, but if you recall to the third base, he'll recall on top of Zerg army. And that's a lot of hydras. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't have the entry. He's just going to engage here. Engaging into the bottom side of the map. This could be a base trade situation. Naniwa taking a lot of these units off guard. He can even target down the Nidus and prevent his opponent from retreating back. But at this point, I don't even know if Jadong wants to retreat. The Nidus get out, gets taken out. Meanwhile, Naniwa looks like he's going to lose his third base. But can he get enough damage done on his opponent's side of the map? Oh, he cleaned up Jadong's arm on both units? sides. Where's Jadong's well, units? Jadong tried to pull most of them out of the Nidus from they died as were being pulled out by the Zealots and Sentry. So uh, it was really a situation when the Hydras are popping oh out right into the Oh my god, Naniwa is up 167 on 115 supply. The army from Jadong is non-existent. He has 11 roaches in production, but what does that do against six Void Rays? Not much. One Hydra is the only anti air along with the Queen. Maybe a Spore Crawler here, maybe a Spore Crawler there, but Naniwa in commanding control of game one. Oh, taking out the Nidus. Now he's just playing mop up here with the Zerg Remnants. Jadon's desperately trying to hold behind the Minerals. He made you a few Zealots, but there's so much Protoss firepower coming in behind us. Jadon desperately trying to come up with an answer. Seven Hydras about to pop out, but again, six Voiders going to be plenty enough. Two, two Hydras pop in right away. There's the GG. Naniwa takes game one of this best of three. And that seemed mildly comfortable there for the Swedish player. And now he has a 1-0 advantage over one of the best Zerg players in the world to ever play StarCraft. Amazing game by Nanoa. He really, he just denied the third so many times. Well, I mean, first he denied the natural, the DTs. Then he hit the third with the Void Ray DT combination. Jadon could never establish that three base economy that Zerg really needs to have to produce their massive amounts of units. So I, well, what happened to the entire Hydra army, the Hydra Roach army? He put it back in the Nidus. So what he, did, he left seven Hydras to kill the Nexus. Sure. And then he sent the rest oh. out. And, and, and uh, what happened is, as they were popping out with Nidus... Because he, he had like 20 Hydras. In yeah, that. but I mean, it was like 13, 14 Hydras, right. and they were popping out, and Zealots and Voidrays were just just killing them. I mean, it, it might have been a mistake to try to pull them out of Nidus, but sure. I think it was a situation where uh, he knew that if he... Like, he was, he was basically in a, in a tough spot, because if he didn't pull them out, he would have killed a third, but then Nano could just kill his natural, kill his main, recall back, save his own natural, and, sure. and it would have been a... Uh, Rough spot. Wow, what an intense game one there. Naniwa taking it. Naniwa is one win away from advancing to the next round of the Spring Championship event at StarCraft II, Heart of the Storm. But 
If there's anyone that has something to say about that, it's this guy. It's Jadong. He must win two in a row. He's certainly capable, guys. Stay tuned. Game two. Jadong Naniwa coming up. The Major League Gaming Pro Circuit.